Hey there, friends. This is Pete with BananaHobby.com. Welcome to Pete's Tuesday Tips. Every week here, I'm going to pop up on Tuesdays and give you a, a little bit of a note or a tip about RC. And uh, welcome back again this week for Pete's Tuesday Tips. What we're going to talk about today is uh, basically what's called control surface throw. Um, what that is, is basically how much travel you want on your control surfaces. There's a lot of misconceptions out there, uh, especially with people that are getting into this hobby and uh, thinking that the more throw you have on your aircraft, the better, uh, which is completely actually wrong there. So we're going to actually just try to break this down uh, the best we can for you without uh, making it too technical. So let's go ahead and talk about control surface throw. This is my own AJ, 59 inch AJ Slick, and uh, this is one of my favorite actually uh, aerobatic and 3D airplanes out on the market. And um, we're going to I'm going to go ahead and show you what kind of control surface throw I have on here. Okay, this, this is my elevator, and that is how much throw is in my ailerons, and then my rudder is almost touching the elevator. Okay, um, when you go ahead and purchase products from uh, Banana Hobby, most likely you will be in the, the uh, category of Warbirds, maybe a glider, or an EDF jet. So you do not want control surface to be moving that much. This is my 3D aircraft, and I can actually still, I still have, have a dual rate set up here. So I'm using my 9503, so I do have dual rate set up for high, high and low rate, okay? Same thing goes for my ailerons and my rudder, okay? If you're setting it up on your own system there and you have a Warbird, we're gonna talk about a couple of different things with the Warbirds here. Um, if you have it max throw on your Warbirds, you're gonna have an extremely sensitive Warbird, especially on a, what I've noticed on AT6s, uh, F4U Corsairs, um, on your uh, F6F, Hellcat, you know, all of these, and especially P51 Mustang. If you have too much throw on your tail, it makes it really pitch sensitive, so we don't want that. When you order something from us, this is uh, one of the wings from an AT6 that we have here. You notice that the control surface horn here will have a row of uh, holes here. And this one has four holes. You may have three, um, you may have five, okay? But this one has four. And we're gonna talk about that. And then you have your uh, control clevis, as you can see here, that's running to your servo horn. And what I have here in my hand, this is a uh, large servo horn from one of my bigger airplanes. And uh, you'll see that this, is connects, this horn actually connects to the servo and you have a, a series of holes here as well. One, two, three, four, this one has four. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about that as well. Um, on your basic side of how to actually get a gauge on how much throw you have, uh, there's a couple of things you can actually do here. This is a, an, an instrument that I have that I use a lot, and this is called an Angle Pro. This is made by Hangar 9, and what this does is it gives you a, uh, a digital readout about, about um, how many degrees of throw is in your uh, control surfaces. So you can actually zero this out, and then as you move it, it'll tell you how many degrees of throw is in there. Um, there's another way of doing it, is actually just measuring the, uh, the control surface here, when you move it, and then how far it is from there to the actual wing, the uh, trailing edge of the wing here, of the main wing. And you can, just get a, you can actually just get a ruler, and then you can kind of just measure it that way as well. And then you can get it in millimeters, or you, know, you can get the reading in inches. I think most of us here, we do the reading in inches. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that real quick here. On your warbirds, on your warbirds, and uh, especially your warbirds, on your tail section here, you do not want this at all. I mean, that is way too much. Let me go ahead and get my gauge on my elevator here, and I can give you guys an idea. Okay, zero that out here. Okay, my elevator is 45 degrees in uh, control surface throw. And we're talking, you know, when you get your airplanes out there, especially the Warbirds, you want to check these holes here. On your Warbirds, on your tail section, you want probably, you know, on the majority of them, on a general rule of thumb, I would say that about 10 to 12 degrees on your elevator is plenty on a Warbird. But by all means, if you're using your own computer radios, go ahead and set up dual rates so you can have a high and a low rate. So you would have a high rate and then a low rate here. Um, you know, and then on your ailerons, you pretty much want to set that up to how you like the airplane to roll. Um, especially on warbirds, you don't need too much aileron deflection at all. And on the rudder as well, you pretty much, very, very limited on the rudder. 
I would set up a high rate just so you can actually turn the aircraft on the ground um, when you need to, and then a, a low rate. You know, I probably have about 10 to 15, probably about 15 degrees on my rudders on my warbirds. Now, if we're talking about EDF jets, that's a different nature. And still, I would still use not, you know, just the point of this today's Tuesday tips is that don't use too much control surface throw on warbirds and on EDF jets, unless you, you know, unless you're doing, uh, unless the jet actually has a thrust vector and you want to do flat spins or, uh, you know, really tight tumbles and things like that. But let's go ahead and talk about this surface here. My tip for you here today is the surface here, the closer your push rod and the clevis is to the lower, to the control surface itself, the more throw you're going to have. Okay, the farther away, if you're using the top, far, the top um, fourth hole on the control surface horn here, that is the least amount of control surface throw you're going to get. Okay, so if you buy an aircraft from us and you don't have computer mixing in the radio to actually trim out how much control surface throw you have, this is the way you do it. Okay, if you want more throw, you want to put it closer towards the surface. If you want less throw, you put it closer or as far away from the surface as you can. And then now, on the control horn, the uh, servo horn is completely different. On the servo horn, the farther outside hole of the servo horn is going to give you more throw. And then the farthest inside hole is going to give you less throw. So it's actually opposite than the uh, surface control horn there. So if you need to turn down your throw on your, uh, on your warbird, let's say you have a P-47 Thunderbolt, and you have way too much elevator, go ahead and move the clevis as far away from the surface as we can first, to, to do that first, and then see how much throw you have. And then if that's still too much throw, go ahead and move the, uh, the push rod down a couple of holes or one hole on your, uh, on your servo horn here, and that'll give you less throw there. Okay, so basically, that's what we're talking about here. I just want to make sure that y'all out there understand that when you get an aircraft from, from Banana Hobby, you don't want this type of control surface throw here. Okay, it'll yield in some really bad flying characteristics and you will probably not have a good experience if you have your Warbird and your elevator doing this on your uh, you know, P-51 Mustang. So let's not do that. Keep in mind, the, very, the least amount of throw on a Warbird is plenty. Um, go ahead and feel it out. Again, like I said, I have probably about 12 to 15 degrees, maybe sometimes 20 degrees, but I'll set up high and low rates on my warbirds. If you don't, at least 12 degrees is probably plenty. Ailerons is a personal preference. I will usually will have probably about 20 to 25 degrees of aileron on various different types of warbirds. And then the rudder is personal preference as well, but I would not keep it too sensitive. Probably about 20 degrees, 15 degrees on your warbirds. And then on your EDS, again, you know, it depends on which EDF jet you have. Uh, again, this is Pete's Tuesday Tips. These are some of the, you know, easier things that we want to talk about here. I don't want to get things too uh, complicated so that people don't really, you know, so y'all are out there going, huh? Well, what did he just say? So by all means, the comment box below here, go ahead and leave me your comments and uh, what you would like to see on uh, Tuesday Tips. Again, we're going to do our webisodes on Thursday. So when you view this today, make sure you go ahead and leave your comments below here and uh, any kind of RC questions you may have for me for the Ask Pete webisodes on Thursday. That's where I'm going to go ahead and pick out you know, 10 or 12 questions and uh, go ahead and answer them for you and uh, post it here on YouTube. So go ahead and ask your questions underneath. Whatever questions you may have, uh, you know, no matter, there's no silly question, so go ahead and ask away, and we'll see what we can get done on Thursday. So again, this is Pete's Tuesday Tips, and today we talked about control surface throw. We're going to keep it light. Let me know your thoughts, and uh, we will go ahead and answer some other stuff for you on Thursday. My name is Pete. Please check us out at BananaHobby.com for all the fun and uh, coolest NRC, basically, and uh, come back next Tuesday for next episode of Pete's Tuesday Tips.